I mean, I hope you destroy this guy. I really, he has such a punchable face. Get out of the water, now! Bend the water away from the electricity. I gotta give it to him, this is a brilliant plan. What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ben. Today I'll be reacting to Legend of Korra episode six. Now, the last episode, that was an interesting one. I just feel so much pain for Berlin after everything that happened. They went into the whole love triangle thing, dealing with the weird relationships. I think personally, I'm not the biggest fan of that, just storytelling in general, but I think the show does it well and just what it needed to do. But of course, now it's left off with Mako not telling Asami about the whole thing, and obviously that's gonna come up, that's gonna happen. And it's whether or not that, what, it'll all depend on her reaction to it, because she is basically the source of their income. So that just feels so poorly mixed together at the minute. So waiting to see how that will handle itself. And the biggest thing that that one left off is the, who they're gonna have to face in the final if they make it there. The group that managed to take um, down their opponents and win the match very quickly, but also inflicting a lot of damage. I think, was it, was it the whole team that was taken away in stretches? I think two of them at least. Can't remember what happened to the last one, but the other one had their, like, mask shattered. So the team now has to be able to get up to that level and actually be able to take down opponents quickly, or at least last long, and also try and not get terribly injured. I am enjoying how the show is be building up because we have the whole Aman side of things and then the pro bending tournament. And right now it feels like Cora's priorities are kind of conflicted between the two. And I do like that. We're getting different episodes focusing on one at a time. So I'm waiting to see when it's gonna clash because obviously Cora's gonna have to pick one over the other at some point. I'm looking forward to when that will eventually happen just to see who she will choose. Will she choose being the avatar over being a friend to Mako and Bolin. Yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe as it really does have the channel to grow. And if you do enjoy my content and you wanna help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there, I'm uploading these videos and the full reaction a week in advance. If that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. But that said, let's just dive on in. I really love the music that this show has. It feels old timey. I don't care if we are the underdogs. We can take those pompous wolf bats. It's gonna be our toughest match ever. You're going against them tonight? So it's not the finals, you're just doing it now? Good morning, citizens of Republic City. Still sweating, so she's not over the fear, good. It's time for this city to stop worshipping bending athletes. It's all coming together, it's all getting involved. Of course he would go after the pro bending thing. It's like the whole Bending the whole entirety. And cancel the finals, or else there will be severe consequences. I and mean, they never really said how many eyes are on the bending thing. We know Tenzin doesn't exactly watch it, but how does the whole city watch this stuff? How big is it in the city? Does it really send that big of a message if Aman gets it cancelled? You shouldn't be here. This is a closed meeting. As the Avatar and a pro bending player, I have a right to be heard. Okay. I know winning the championship means a lot to you, but as far as I'm concerned, we need to shut the arena down. Mmm, caving to Aman. There's no way you're backing down from Aman, right? Actually, Tenzin and I agree for once. Oh, wow, okay, that's kind of good, I guess. We're closing the arena. Case people safe, that is the right decision, I guess. I will not put innocent lives at stake just so you and your friends can play a game. Okay, good, okay, that's a good sign for you, wonderful. Right now the arena is the one place where benders and non-benders gather together in, in peace to watch benders- Non-benders do nothing there though. In peace, it's an inspiration to everyone. Is it, no, you could literally get rid of the non-benders and it wouldn't change at all. Reality is, if you close the arena, you let Amon win. But our decision has been made. Safety trumps, meaning Amon wins. <laughs> What is that? You? Can't believe I'm saying this, but I agree with the Avatar. You do. Okay, you're gonna be, are you gonna get a more prominent role here now? It's time that the benders of this city displayed some strength and unity against these equalists. Uh, yeah, you're also, you, you, uh, it's divisive again. Just benders, it needs to be non-benders and benders going against the equalists. Having it just be the benders kind of proves Aman's point a little bit. There's no better force to deal with the chi blockers. Our armor is impervious to their attack. Oh, that's perfect then. Use that. Okay, that, so you can use it as a giant trap then? She has my support. Okay. I am changing my vote. Who else is with me? Uh, they're so easily swayed. Good luck in the finals. All right! Yeah! Okay, okay, so putting safety at risk. I know what I'm doing and the risks that come with it. In that case, I'm going to be by your side during the match. You don't need to babysit me. How close is their relationship? They must have grown up together. I want more on this. It's not like I've ever been able to stop you before. I excuse me, Chief Beifeng. I wanted to thank you for your help. She does not care at all. I've known Lin since we were children. She's always been challenging. 
Okay. My father and Lynn got along famously. I'm afraid her oh. issues are with me. What did you do? I'm trying to think, is this like a tough type of thing to do? Beifong and you, you two were a couple. What? How? Where'd you get that idea? Is that true? Your wife. Criminy. I'll have to have a word with her. Okay, that's how it, oh dear. Lynn and I had been growing apart for some time. We both had different goals in life. Why am I even- I sounded like a flashback as it seemed in. Nope. Moved past it. Hmm. Apparently Beifong hasn't. What do you mean? Is she really still hung up on it? She has. Anyway, this is none of your business. Okay, I love that, that we're getting so much more on. Yeah, it makes sense. Growing up together, their parents or friends, of course, that was bound to happen. And then, so they just grew apart, but apparently it wasn't mutual. Lin did still want to be with Tenzin. They're keeping the arena open. Perfect. Everything is going according to plan. What is that? What, what are you shipping in? What, okay, so, so things, great. Your plan, amazing. You're shipping things in. That is bad. So you, so oh, they're both going to try and play each other. Aman's got some other weird sneaky plan with, I would assume explosives. It's in boxes and crates. You can't see it. Immediate thought, explosives. But then Lin is trying to... All oh. clear, Chief. Okay, so you've swept the whole thing. You're trying to make sure everything's prepared as well. But you, you need to get inside of his head. You, what are you thinking he might be doing? With so much on the line, it would be nice if we could help each other out. At least for one night. Like old times. She does. Oh yeah, she really does like wish that she was with you, doesn't she? Less abrasive than usual. I would appreciate that. Okay, so she isn't over it completely then. Uh, like, yeah, it would have been a little while. He has children now. Now I know there's a big crowd. But don't be nervous. You're gonna do. Great. He's talking to the ferret, isn't he? I believe in you. Yeah. Oh, and he's got a little uniform too. The future industries fire ferrets. Okay. Uh, oh, the people were cosplaying as them. Awesome. But yeah. So with the um, how has this? Uh, I don't feel like they can win here. There's been no time for them to develop in their skill since last episode when it showed off how powerful the other team were. I guess the whole relationship drama should be over, so they seem better. <laughs> oh, we're doing little tricks. This is interesting. Nailed it. He's so talented. Yay! The White Falls Wolfpack. Great, yeah. Great, horrifying. Oh uh, no! Why? I want to prefer the ferrets one, but that's that's epic. They got nothing on us, buddy. Anybody can howl. True, true. I mean, I hope you destroy this guy. I really, he has such a punchable face. It's not going to go well, is it? You're going to be destroyed. And yep, just rushing them. Okay, yeah, this isn't going bad. This is going so badly. Who gets fancy but Bolin ricochets a disc off the rope. Oh, nice. Okay, better. Good, Bolin. Nice shot. And you look angry. Otto gets a little too worked up and unleashes a deluge on Bolin that will certainly elicit a foul. Great. Or apparently not. Wait, no foul? That was a hosing foul. And the wolf bat. Oh, is the ref, like, bad? Like, dirty or corrupt? I don't know what the word is. Officials. Ming trips up Paco with another dirty trick. They can do that. There was some funny business in that last play. Wouldn't have guessed you knew the rules of pro bending. What's the? Why isn't the ref doing it? So the ref's been bought. The wolf bat smell one. Ice. Can they do that? Can they use ice? Otto snuck in an illegal icing move, but once again, there's no call. So you can see it. Why can't the ref do anything? Oh, a splashing fire send the avatar to zone three as well. Oh wow, they really are just not stopping. It's Great. The so they're cheaters, that's how they win. So it's not just because they're good, they are just cheaters. Scratch that! The ferrets are still alive! That's allowed? Uh, check him up, check him up! Go, go, go! Sneak attack, sneak attack! Uh, oh, if only it was stronger, you could have whacked him right off. An unbelievable move! The okay, I do like how annoyed that guy looks. Someone wants us to lose. If the wolf bats are gonna fight dirty, then so should we. I wouldn't. No, we can't. The refs have it out for us. Yes, they will find every little thing you do. That's no fun, but... All right. You just gotta be prepared for what they could do. Now you know that they're gonna fight dirty, expect it. But once again, Tano sneaks ice. in a little ice to get the upper hand. But then you can't bend the ice, because that would be illegal, wouldn't it? Wow, those look like illegal headshots to me. Oh, absolutely. Can they do lightning in this? That'd be a bit much, wouldn't it? If one can do ice, would someone do lightning? Which element do you choose? 
I'm taking this. Great water. You and me, pretty boy. Thought you'd never ask. Destroy him, please. One on one. But then he's going to use the ice stuff. But Cor, is she going to use the ice and let her temper get the better of her and then she'll get fouled? Come on, little girl. Give me your best shot. In the face. That's what he wants. Yep. Oh! Is that loud? Undercut, up, right, uppercut. Is that. Ooh, is that. Is that allowed? Sure. Tell me it's allowed. <laughs> Round two goes to the fire. Oh, it's loud. Good, good, good. Thank you. We might actually win this thing. Please. <sighs> well, I gotta remember the whole Lamont thing. Let's send them to a watery grave. Oh, please destroy him. Your sweet tempered father was reincarnated into that girl. <laughs> She's tough as nails. Reminds me of someone. Wait, isn't that she's liking it? You two might get along if you would only give her a chance. Hmm. Maybe. Me. Well, like, why? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's weird that she's how against her she is. Hang in there with the best, especially mm. with the best. Are frankly getting a little. I want them to win. They don't feel like they have developed enough to do it, but I would like it. But then you got the whole Lamar situation. Who you know is going to interrupt this when it gets really good. Oh, great. Rox, no! Hang on! No. Can someone go, can someone hurt the ref? I don't, don't, I just don't like the ref. Replace them. Oh, what though, they won? Oh. Oh, they're among the crowd. That is brilliant. What is it? What are the gloves? Can they, what is that? Can, uh, why are they using gloves to, Tenzin, Lin, no. They're among the crowd. Please get away. Get away. Get away. Yep. No, 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 no. Okay, they're shocking. There's no, that's not the chi blocking thing. It's just electrocution. Don't, don't take away Tenzin's bending. And they're taking out all the metal benders. Great. So, pro bending's over. You lost. That's great. And now I'm annoyed that the stupid guy won. Get out of the water now. Bend the water away from the electricity. Nope. I gotta give it to them. This is a brilliant plan. There is some sort of electrical disturbance in the stands. Metal bender cups are dropping like bumbleflies. No one's coming for you. Here to be masked members of the audience wielding strange devices on their hands. steps yet. Yeah. One of them is in the booth with me right now, folks. Okay. He is leveling one of them. <laughs> is it necessary to zap him? He is about to electrocute me. I am currently wetting my pants. <laughs> And here's Aman. Are you about to send, is this the message you're gonna send? Kind of good that Cora didn't win then, because I would assume she would be in that position. Okay, dragged away, metal, no, it's not Lynn who dragged you away. You want a piece of the wolf bat? Oh, you're very, you're so full of yourself. And yep, he just doesn't care. Is he, well, how is he like this good at avoiding everything? Like these guys were nuts. And the bowler, so yeah, stop them before they can do a lot. Are you gonna take away their bending? Please don't do this, I'll give you the championship part. Oh. You don't care about that. Just please don't take my bending. Oh, they're doing a good job of making me feel sympathy for this guy now. And it's, yep, it's gone, okay. And check to them. They have flags now? Oh, wow. Do I feel bad for him? I don't know. Maybe, I guess. Oh wait, it's no, it's bad guy taking you. Memories? Ang! What is that? So you're seeing past memories. So once again, the wolf bats are your pro bending champion. And they take the bending away from the champions. Celebrate three bullies who cheated their way to victory because every day you threaten and abuse your fellow. Each and every time he's taking away bending, it's someone bad. Someone who's abusing their bending. And yet it only took a few moments for me to cleanse them of their impurity. Cleanse. Oh, the way he words it. If any of you stand in my way, you will meet the the same face. Hmm. Oh wait, so that's actually giving them the option of keeping their bending then. For years, the equalists have been forced to hide in the shadows. Years. We have the numbers and the strength to create a new Republic City. What? Oh great. Change How are we gonna get out of here? Come. Very soon. The save the day, come on, save the day. Go on, Pabu. Fair-minded equalist government. You can talk to the ferret, no way. I'm not, I'm trying to save us. Can he actually talk? Oh no, he's just doing the biting motion. <laughs> For centuries, benders have possessed an unnatural advantage over ordinary. Unnatural. 
technically spiritual, maybe. How anyone can hold the power of a chi blocker in their hand? Electrocution. Not rest until the entire city achieves equality. Hey. We will equalize the rest of the world. Ah, so yeah, they have big plans. Revolution has. Because. So what what kind of equality do you seek? Is it just to put, make force every bender to stop their bending, or can they live or do something and just like elevate non-benders, or is it just the eradication of every single bender, like just cleansing them, as he said? You got your bending, and you? Oh, w ah, it was explosives. I knew it. It's a little explosion. Yep. Keep, chewing, you're almost keep going, keep going. There's such a loyal pet, hasn't run away. I love this thing. Oh, I loved how that ice formed. That formed like snowflakes. Okay, go, 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 go. And you're going after him. Is this. Oh, 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 no. No. Why? No. What's that? What's that? Lynn, work together. Are you both going after him? Go on, wow. Okay, good, good. I mean, these are like his top people, right? You get, you capture them, you can interrogate them. Oh, are they dead? He's getting away. He's got away. Wait, so he's commanded one of the air balloons then. Oh, wow, this place is destroyed. Wait, is he not getting away? Is it not over? I feel like it could end at any second. I don't want it to end. I w like, what can happen? Okay, so, so everything's still going. And no, Lynn's down. Okay. Save, yep, you saved her. Uh, I think, yeah, Man's gonna get away. Is this one of the top guys? This is like his right-hand man, isn't it? If you capture him, that would be great. Lynn, you good? Yes. I really wanna see more metal bending, what the? Oh, it's like, is that like ribbon dancing now? I can't tell. I mean, yeah, just using the whips. It's so cool how they've done this with metal bending. Ooh, you just, get, I can't tell you. Is his face exposed? The fire could really burn him. How is this guy not down yet? Don't die, don't kill him, you need him. Don't fall! Lin? Let, you're gonna have to let go. I love you now, go save her. Ooh. Okay, please work together. That was incredible. If you lot stay- Ah, that's a- You're gonna fall again? Please don't. They've landed. Okay, please work together like all the time now. You two were incredible. Don't mention it, kid. Looks like we lost this one. Yep, you put up such a good fight. I played right into his hand. He played us all. Public City is at war. Oh, great. So yeah, this just escalated everything. Yeah, I do like the, how what this episode did now. And ending. Okay, so the popo bending plot, I guess that's done with now. Now it's just full scale war with Aman. Okay, right. This episode was incredible. So to, I, they managed to seamlessly put together the whole, the two plots going on with the pro bending and Aman side of things, and they used it in such a good way. I was assuming that they was gonna force Cora to choose between pro bending and Aman stuff, considering that she's very conflicted between it, and the plot was very sort of separated through them. One was a very big main plot and one was more the fun side of things. They just used the, all of it to really elevate Aman's plan. So right now he's used that whole thing as an example of this is your greatest bender. This is what you see as the most powerful among you. And he's destroyed it. He's taken this beautiful building as well and completely destroyed that too. And like the guy just doesn't falter. He is insane. He was able to take out the shady guy. I'm never gonna remember his name. But that, he just does it so effortlessly, how he avoids it all. Like I'm so, cause like, yeah, someone mentioned recently that his whole plan and his whole stuff, he's a villain that could technically be reasoned with. He's not downright evil, he's seeing an injustice which could be agreed with. We're seeing that non-benders are treated not as equally as regular benders considering the positions that are available within the city. Police force, any power plant, pro-bending stuff. No non-bender can participate in any of that. So there is more opportunity for benders than there is non-benders. I mean, it's such an interesting villain to pair with Cora as well. She is like, she just loves to fight. The whole pro-bending thing is a boxing ring. And now you have a villain that could technically be reasoned with. It's such a good challenge for her, considering this, she doesn't really know how to reason with a villain. This guy could be reasoned with. Yet she, her only, uh, the only option she thinks of is trying to just beat him up. She's not realizing that you, 
not you can try and defeat him, yes, that would solve some issues, but you still have the people who've sided with him, joined him willingly, who, the, the idea is there. She has no idea how to combat the idea, and that's what she now has to develop, and that could honestly help her get in the mind of the whole spirituality of airbending and all of this stuff that comes with the Avatar, because right now she's just a fighter, she's just doing the fighting forms. She has no idea of the other stuff that goes on with the Avatar, and this villain is the perfect way to get her into that. But I think this episode as a whole was really interesting, just seeing how Korra actually did lose to the wolf bat team, and I just love how that was used, because you don't expect it, you'd think that they would win, but I do like that they lost, because first off they did not have enough time to develop and be able to beat them, I thought that would be maybe in the final of the show that they had come together and that's when the final of Probending would be and it would coincide with the whole Amaran thing, but this show just completely flipped that. Actually having it directly after the episode that they were introduced, having them destroy Korra, like that you would expect them to, considering Korra just hasn't done much training since, and I'm just really loving that they showed off how quite slimy these benders were, how they were using all these tricks to win, they were basically bullies, and Aman is kind of, you can almost feel satisfied that he took their bending away. I think that scene was done really well, because like, part of me was almost enjoyed that he got his bending taken away, but part of me was also just very sympathetic towards him as well. It's such a horrifying act, but you gotta think, does this guy deserve bending if this is what he's using it for? He's abusing it, he's cheating throughout a tournament, and he's gonna profit from it. That's not great. So was it why sick is bending away? Because you can look at it like Ozai, he deserved to have his bending taken away because he was abusing it and using it to destroy everything and to basically profit from it as well. He's gonna become Phoenix, king of the world. Of course, you can kind of compare him to this guy, but this guy's very much not on the same level as Ozai, obviously. But you can almost, you can definitely agree with Aman and that's what makes him such a compelling villain here. But yeah, definitely loved that we got so much more on Lynn in this episode and that she does feel like an actual character now. She had two appearances before this. I think it was her in the jail cell with Korra and then at the party Tarlock through for Korra. So we're actually getting some stuff on her and we actually got a whole fight scene with her, which was insane. Love that they deepened the connection between her and Tenzin, that she was actually the one that dated Tenzin before his now wife did. And like that just adds so much more to the last episode as well, because it just, that means that that built on this episode, not just in the relationship stuff, but that little story that the wife told Cora actually led into this, which I love. But yeah, now that explains why Lynn is so like abrasive, because she's hurt. I wonder what she was like when she was with Tenzin. Was she happier? Like, what is what is this character? Yeah, then the fight scene was awesome. I love how they've changed, like, done stuff with metal bending. They haven't changed it, they've advanced it. And it almost felt like gymnastics here, like ribbon dancing. It was so graceful in a way. It felt, yeah, kind of trapeze, like the aerial stuff of it. Because that's all we're seeing from it. It's the using the ropes to get around. That's what the police did. That's what Lynn is doing with her ropes. It's so cool how they've taken what Toph invented and changed it into this new style. Yeah, I so hope that she's on a better page with Cora now, because that fight scene, I want more of it. They worked so well together, and I just want more. Yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing how this episode will develop Cora now. Because just looking at it, this episode didn't really focus on Cora a lot. They had little bits where it showed that she still has the fear of Aman, but overall it was basically for Aman. This was his episode. He owned it. Cora needs to develop and do it fast. And I think, yeah, this is halfway through the show, uh, the season, isn't it? This is episode 6 out of 12. Shame that there is so few episodes compared to um, The Last Airbender, but t yeah, I get it, because that's just what shows do now, they shorten all the seasons. I think I just really like how this was a big misdirect, and me making me think that this was that the last episode was going to show where the pro benders need to, do, need to develop to get to the wolf bat level. And immediately just crushed them, and now they've got a new thing to develop towards. It is Aman. They have completely taking the focus away from the pro-bending, that is done now, and it is moving to Aman. So he's become the focus, he, and he is at war with the city. This feels like it's just gotten so much bigger in everything. Okay, first off, I really enjoyed this episode. This was such a good, like, I guess, step for Korra as well. Because throughout this whole show, it seems like her attention's been divided between Aman and the pro-bending thing. Now it's all come together, and only halfway through the show. So now she has the rest of the season to develop and focus on one specific thing, and it seems like it's just gotten so much more bigger, I guess, and exploded from here. Amar has basically declared war on the entire city and after that the world, so now Korra very much has to focus on this new threat. I do really like what this episode did for her because it did make her feel quite helpless. First off, she lost to the pro-bending team. They cheated, yes, but she did, she did lose to them. Then when she heard Amar again, she still has that fear. 
and she also was able to get on better terms with Lynn, chief of police, which is always a good thing to, I guess, do. So she has that stuff. So she's developed in one area, getting a relationship with someone who could very much help her in the future, and also setting up the fact that she's just not ready to take on Amman. I mean, she just has so much left to do, and I love that she just isn't getting any like, victory against this guy. The one victory she had was saving Bolin. That, was, that is because Amman wanted her to escape and technically win there. So that means it's kind of a win for him. It's making Amman such a good villain, but also giving Korra so much room to develop. And it's making her feel like a true underdog, like the pro bending was talking about. So I can't wait to see how she will progress and be able to match this guy. Then Amman, flawless as ever. He is just effortlessly powerful. He is incredibly intelligent and it's just, it's wonderful watching him work. Like just seeing his plan, I mean, just seeing his plan unfold is so, I guess, almost satisfying in a way because you can appreciate how smart it is. Yes, it's awful, but it's very smart. Like he's playing the entire city so well and it is just quite fun to watch at some point. Like the guy isn't even super evil, I guess. You can understand where he's coming from. His action and the whole taking away bending, that is quite evil but his motivation isn't. He seeks equality for non-benders. That is an admirable cause, considering what we've seen at the city. And like the when he does take bending away, he's only done it to crime bosses and bullies who have abused their bending. If anything, when he uses it, he's used it similar to how Ang used it to take away Ozai's bending. And it's just very conflicting to me because he is the one against the Avatar. And he's doing all these, you'd think, bad things, but is there really anything super bad going on? The bending that he's taken away, you could argue, is kind of a benefit to society. To say taking away anyone's bending is pure evil would be to say that Aang taking away Ozai's bending is evil. But we know that's not the case because Ozai was using bending for, for evil and for harm and all of this stuff. Crime bosses, they would be abusing their bending. These pro-benders who are bullying and putting a bad rep, I guess they were using their bending for bad things. Probably not as evil as crime laws and Ozai, but still technically bad. And, uh, and Aman is still taking away their bending. I would love to get to know him more and just seeing if he will cross the line. Will he go against innocent people who are, happen to be benders, who aren't abusing their bending? Will he try to take away their bending? Bolin came close, but I don't think he was ever actually going to take away his bending. He knew Korra was going to come in. I don't think he was ever going to actually do it. Then we got Lin, so happy that she's getting more stuff to do, because again, she's a child from one of the main Avatar lot, so I'm glad that we're getting to just get more info on her. And it's so awesome how they connected it with the last episode, which felt kind of, it felt separate from the plot. They were dealing with the relationship stuff, but it's nice that they were able to tie in the fact that Lin was the person that tends in was with before his current wife. And that then that story ended up adding to Korra and all of that stuff. So I like how that tied in. And that explains why Lynn seems to be quite miserable because she lost the person that she did love. So that is quite a shame and that adds some sympathy to her. So she's not just a really awesome fighter and character. She also has a, quite a good level of depth and she's quite a sad character that lost someone like that. And she lost her, lost the person that she really did love to someone else. If anything, she should be able to relate to Korra quite well. And I'm really hoping that they get a good relationship now that, that can just develop because they seem very similar. They're both very strong fighters and they basically have lost the person that they kind of... Korra has, doesn't, I wouldn't say love, it was more of a crush, but they're similar. So I hope that they can almost relate over those things. Maybe Lynn can even see herself in Korra and she might even become like a mentor figure for her, which could be good as well. There's so much they could do with Lynn and I'm so happy that she got so much to do here. Just the fight scene. I'm hoping that we get more of that. Then Tenzin. He's feeling kind of powerless at the minute with the council because that's twice now I think the council has sided against him and Tarlok, Tarlok has gotten his way. But yeah, I'm so scared for him to lose his bending. This is like his his relationship with Aman is becoming very interesting because it's whatever Aman's plan is, is it to eradicate all bending or just eradicate people who are abusing their bending? In which case, Tenzin should be fine. He should be left completely alone, which here he kind of was, but I think Aman knew he couldn't stay there for long. So I, I just need Tenzin to stay safe and not to lose his bending because that'd be dreadful but I do like that they are just using him more and just building him here, like adding in the relationship with Lin and him, I guess, being kind of oblivious to the fact that that's why Lin is kind of the way she is. It's quite funny. But honestly, I just think it'd be really interesting if Tenzin and Aman actually had like a conversation or something because Aman feels like someone who could be reasoned with. I know this is like meant to be a point on Tenzin, but I just, it feels like Tenzin could reason with him. He feels like that kind of character. Aman has no reason to take away 
Tenzin's bending. He is not the one helping the inequality. And I would just love if that's like a scene that gets to happen. Because it would elevate Aman and Tenzin to like both a very power. It would elevate Tenzin to a powerful position and plus Aman to a more rational position and something that could be understood more. I think Tenzin and Lin are basically the perfect characters to be mentors for Korra. Tenzin does the ra like the, I guess, rational sort of being able to reason with people, the spiritual side of things. Lin could be the fighter. That could be how Korra develops into other fighting styles. Because of course she would have learned the main bending styles, but Lin is completely outside of that. She could give Korra a completely different perspective. And just her, combined with Tenzin, could be insane and really powerful for teaching Korra. Then the pro bending. I am so surprised that this has been, I'm, so I would assume ending here after this, place has been destroyed. That creates so much more, I guess, story for Mako and Bolin since their whole thing was the pro bending. Now, where does this leave them? But yeah, I, I so thought that that was going to be something leading up to the final where Korra would basically have to choose between pro bending with her friends or choosing to do avatar stuff but no it all just collides here which i think was such a good misdirect and it does open up other characters to be able to do new things now and it was used so well to elevate aman i think i am gonna miss the fact that this felt like the fun sort of type of thing to be away from the plot it felt like a good break in those episodes that it did focus on pro bending rather than aman but now with all out war being on in the city that seems like that's gonna be very much constant. I don't think there's going to be a break there. Aman has definitely stepped up and he's doing more now. So pro bending was the escape that is now gone. So I am ready to see what kind of void this will leave and what kind of impact having pro bending be done here will have on the rest of the season. I do also think it's really cool that the main group didn't actually win. It's quite interesting that the main characters didn't win this plot line. They lost here. And it wasn't even to the main villain. It was a guy that was introduced in the last episode. Yes, it was cheating, but it proves that they got to stay fair and it also puts them in a better position for the final. Because I think if Korra won, Aman probably would have gone for her. That wouldn't have been great. He relied on the fact that she would lose here. I just think with Pro Bending being just a fun side plot, it was used so well in just actually moving the main plot forward. That's just really interesting to me. And I've got to talk about this. Pabu Shon in this episode. I love this creature so much. Like actually doing that, I love the little dance he did at the start. It's such a good little cute animal thing. This is the equivalent to Momo from uh, like The Last Airbender, wouldn't it? But I guess more, Momo would, Momo's more like a cat, it does its own thing. Pabu seems a little more, I wouldn't say intelligent, but more with it, I guess. Momo was very intelligent. You couldn't, Momo has no flaws, but Pabu's different. Pabu seemed like being able to, I guess, communicate and save them from the binds. Momo would have done that, but I guess would need more encouragement to do so. I feel like Momo would get confused more. Perfectly fine that Momo would be as intelligent to be able to undo the binds, but it would take more to get Momo to understand what needs to be done. Pabu got it. You got Pabu doing a little dance thing at the start, having dressed in the uniform. It's she, it is part of the team. And I think Pabu is a great successor to Momo then. So yeah, now where this episode leaves off, Aman has declared war in Republic City and has eyes for the rest of the world as well. Now, I like that they leave it sort of ambiguous what his motives are here. We know he wants equality. It's very much a simplistic view of it. That's what he said. He wants equality. He hasn't exactly said what that equality looks like. We only say, we can only gather what he means through his actions. We're moving bending from people. If you look closer, he's removing bending from bad people, people who are abusing their bending. We haven't seen him take away anyone's bending who are just an average person who's not doing anything bad with it yet. So he could be a very reasonable person, but it's so interesting that he's fully declared war on the city. He has now reached that level of power that he can do that. So there's now gonna be a civil war going on here. I cannot wait to see what the next episode will do in just what will the state of the city be like? It's felt relatively calm right now. Yes, it's had issues, but it feels like anyone can just go out and do their day-to-day -day stuff. Are we gonna see like just random chaos in the streets now? What is it gonna be like? Is he gonna cause his followers to start causing just absolute damage and destruction to people who are abusing bending? Is he gonna wanna take down the police force? Is he want, gonna want to take down the power plant? I feel like the next episodes will very much solidify what his motivations are. Is he someone that can be reasoned with? Does he want to remove all bending entirely? Or is there a more reserved part of him that will let non-bend... He, does he want actual equality where he wants to elevate non-benders rather than diminish regular... Uh, 
Benders. They're not regular, like just Benders. Yeah, overall, I think this episode was fantastic. I love that it was able to tie in with the last one, which felt kind of separate from the main plot. And it just really elevated Aman and the villain and was a great mid-season episode. Paula feels like she has so much development to do. I like that we've seen her develop and now it's just let you realize she's still nowhere close to being able to take on Aman. Even physically, I would say she's close, but that's I don't think that's going to be the answer to this. She needs to be able to reason with this guy, or at least understand him, or be able to do something other than fight him. And I'm so hopeful that this episode will lead into that. She has the fear. She's realised that she's been beaten by other people who have cheated here. She tried to play fair, but she couldn't win that way. That could also set up a, like a more darker tone to this. She's realised she can't win by playing fair, so maybe she will now fight Aman unfairly. Will she go and do something like that? This sets up so much and I'm just so excited to see how the show will go from here. This feels like it's elevated it to another level, feels like it's gone to like a war here, probably not going to be in the same sense of the 100 year war, but I'm guessing it's going to play into it a little bit and actually go into the chaos of what Aman wants to cause. Yeah, with that said, that does bring me to the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments and with that, I will see you in the next one for episode seven. See ya.